guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am going to be doing another pastel painting tutorial. Now I'm going to do this one a little bit different. We're going to switch the style up a little bit because I really want to spend enough time on this that I can be proud of the work and I can feel good about it but I also want to include enough real-time clips that you guys can get enough out of this video so the best compromise that I have is that I'm going to include some real-time clips as well as speed up portions of it since I think that being that we're doing um, kind of a repetitive design, meaning there's multiple macaron cookies in this um, design that I've done here, that many of the clips are going to be, or many of the instructions are probably going to be relatively redundant and a little bit repetitive. So I want to strike a happy compromise here. So let's see if we can't have that happen. I am working on pastel matte paper today. Um, it just happens to be my favorite paper. I have an 8x10 piece here, and I'm going to be using the Blick Artist Soft Pastels, as well as a few Rembrandt Pastels. I love Rembrandt Pastels. I really like the Blick Artist, and I have a full review on those, by the way. So I will link them up. I'll link that video up in the description box down below in case you guys are interested in the eye cards as well. I'm starting off with like this soft buttery kind of yellow. I'm going to include some of that in my background. And where else do I want that? I'm going to do a little bit just down here as well. Now, just because I'm using these supplies doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use these supplies. Use whatever you have, okay? I'm taking a soft kind of purple here. If you have a different brand, maybe maybe you have those Faber Castell um, pastels, go ahead and use those. Bear in mind, use whatever that's going to work for you. But I have these, and I really do like them a lot, so I'd like to use them. I'm just throwing in some some kind of random colors here. Well, actually, they're not really random. They're colors that are going to be in the macaron cookies. So this is a really good way right off the bat to establish some color harmony <clears throat> in my work. So I'm gonna include all different shades of pinks and purple. Now I've kind of decided that right about this line here, I want there to be a horizon line, if you will, that sort of separates the, the background from like the napkin or the table. I'm not even sure that I'm 100% certain what the context here, what the situation is. Not sure really that we care either. Not sure it matters. There we go. And I want the lower part to just end up overall being a bit lighter than the rest of it. Now I've sketched on using some pastel pencils just so that you could see the design a bit better. I'm going to carefully go around it as much as I can. The great thing about pastel is that it is incredibly forgiving of a medium. So if it's not like watercolor where if I happen to go over the macaron cookies that it would be, you know, whatever's down is down. I can always erase it out and bring that back if I need to. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish up adding in these colors in the background. I'm going to layer them up, you know, until I'm happy with it. And I want this to be relatively bright and cheerful. And remember that I said I want it to be lighter on the lower third here versus the, the top two thirds. I want that to be a little bit darker. But I want these macaron cookies to be bright and cheerful and colorful. And I want the background to reflect that feeling. So I'm going to speed it up at this point.
as I'm going around and doing this background, something that you should think about is that, for example, this is going to be a yellow macaron. So to have this light lavender, light purpley color right up next to it is really going to cause there to be a beautiful, a beautiful, um, you know, contrast of colors since, um, for example, yellow and purple are opposite colors. So that's really going to make everything seem so much more vibrant and punchy than it already is. I base coated the, the bottom part of this out with white first and then blended some of my colors into it. The reason for that is because I wanted those colors down there to be lighter. Now, one more quick thing I wanted to mention is that I actually did film a tutorial on these exact macarons that I had done in watercolor markers and gouache. So it was like a mixed media kind of a thing. I never uploaded it, but I'm gonna insert a picture and you guys let me know if you're interested in seeing it. Um, if so, I can upload it, it's absolutely no problem. And if you guys aren't that interested in it, then I'll just go ahead and skip it. I'm gonna leave at some point in here some relatively um, rough kind of marks in some places just for a little added visual interest and texture. But overall, as I had originally said, I definitely want the top part of this to be more, more vibrant, more saturated than the than the bottom and another thing you want to keep in mind as you're planning out your painting is for example this is going to be a pink macaron so i've got some uh, some of that brighter pink up in the corner there but if i have that real close to that um, pink macaron then there'll be no contrast so you don't want to put like the yellow right next to the yellow or the pink right next to the pink macaron you want to use kind of opposite colors otherwise there's not going to be enough contrast and it won't stand out well enough so that's something else to keep in mind there. I really like this pastel matte paper because it can hold so, so many layers. But if you don't have this paper, don't worry about it. You can use Canvas and Mitants if that's what you have. That's not a problem. And these, um, these uh, Rembrandt pastels and the Blick Artist pastels, they are such a lovely texture. You know, they work really well for just a workhorse pastel because they have enough firmness to them where you can get some detail, but also they're soft enough to have the color. So they're a nice you know, nice vibrant punchy color. So they are a nice happy medium kind of workhorse texture. So I really like that. One more thing that I wanted to mention is that you wanna make sure that, especially if you're gonna come in and add some dashes of yellow, since the yellow and the violet are opposite colors, you don't want to, to do too much blending of like a yellow over a violet and vice versa because that's how you're going to end up mixing mud. So something else to keep in mind there as you go along with your background. I just wanted to pop in and include a little bit more help, I guess, or a little bit more instruction. And now we're going to go ahead and speed this the rest of the way up now. background for the most part I'm ignoring the shadows on the table or the napkin of the macarons for now but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in with the middle um, purple macaron to start believe it or not because I know that I need a nice dark shadow under there and I really want to start there to add some visual weight to the piece right away and start to get some of my values in. So I'm going to go in with this this is a Rembrandt here and something that you can do is you can take a sheet of glassine 
and rest your hand under it that way that you're not smudging into your work. Now if you're working on pastel matte paper, then the glassine would, would come with it, but you can also purchase uh, glassine in rolls, in, you know, in individual rolls that you can cut down to sheets. So I've got this nice dark violet here, and that is gonna be the shadow. Because there's that pink macaron on top, it's gonna be casting a shadow onto that purple one. And let's see, I'm gonna rest my hand on it a little bit. I'm gonna take a shade or a value lighter. Just kinda, okay. Now this is actually, oh, that's not right, hold on. Mm -mm. No, that's too blue and it's actually darker than what we just used. So that is definitely wrong. Um, so I'm just going to kind of come down in this fashion. Now, I'm not worrying about perfection. I'm obviously not going for any kind of realism really today. Um, I mean, it will, it will be somewhat realistic, but I'm really having fun with this. I want it to be more, more impressionistic, I guess, more illustrative. we go trying to go on the edge to get more more detailed more deliberate marks where I need them Alright, so now for that filling, I know that I want that to be very dark. This is the Rembrandt, um, I think it's like red violet extra dark or it's violet extra dark, something like that. Rembrandt has some of the best, best extra dark pastels. They can be difficult to get your extra darks in pastel, but Rembrandt really does make some of the best. This is like a jam kind of filling in this one. It's the only one. Um, of all of them, all of the other cookies are gonna have that white filling, but this one is going to have that kind of jam filling. So it's almost black, but it's really not. It's a very dark purple. I'm gonna have that, you know, around the outside edges and, and toward the outer part. And then I'm gonna come in with a value, just one value lighter and start bringing that in like so. To create that nice jam filling inside the macaron cookie. And if you have any dust, I have a little bit of dust on my paper. I'm not worrying about it too much at the moment, but I will occasionally stop and tap that dust off into a trash can. If you've watched any of my tutorials in the past, then this likely will sound like a broken record to you, but don't blow the dust, tap it off into the trash can. In case you're new here, um, if this is your first tutorial, that dust is not good for you to breathe in, okay? So I've just gone down like one value on that and then I'm gonna go down another value. This is like that dark warm color there and I'm just gonna add a little bit more of that. So I just want, I just want it to be beautifully soft and smooth purple, dark purple filling. And then we'll come in and then we'll come in and we'll add the highlights. And to do that, I'm gonna take one of my lighter purple values. Uh, let's see, let's go down all the way to this purple and on the edges, you'll see that, right? Okay. Let's 
And then I'm gonna come in with this lighter purple for the side that the light is coming from. The reflection off that shiny jam would be the most bright on this side. So I want that to be even lighter shine on that side. Okay, we'll just do a few little dots of it. But for the most part, I want it lighter on this side, like so. And then for the little like crumbly bit, I think they call it actually the feet of the macaron cookie. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do some squiggles with this it's not my darkest purple, but it's definitely not my lightest either. It's like a mid-toned purple. And I'm gonna come and add a few squiggles with another purple here. Like that, but I really wanna make sure I get a little bit of random texture in there. And then I'll come in with my lighter color So the darker purple would be like the little nooks and crannies, kind of like a, um, an English muffin might have. That would be the shadows inside those little nooks and crannies. And then the lighter is like, you know, just the, the cake cookie part that's coming out. And make sure I come back and forth. It's always going to be a layering process. You're going to have to come back and, you know, go back and forth. roughly that macaron. It's not done yet, obviously, but it's, you know, that's the first layer roughly blocked in. And we'll come back and refine it a little bit um, in a moment. But remember I said that the background color is starting to be a little bit too close and I'm losing definition between the background and that macaron in that spot there. And I'm like, well, it doesn't really bother me. Well, I've changed my mind. I've had a change of heart. It does bother me. So I'm going to come in. I'm actually going to use a little bit of yellow to kind of add some yellow to the background in just the right spot. And the great thing about that is, is that again, because it's a complementary color, I would not use pink because this macaron is gonna be pink. So I think the yellow is just, that's just what I needed to get that to really just sparkle there in a beautiful way. Now I've left a lot of the strokes, the individual strokes kind of rough in this background. If you don't like that look, that's okay. You can absolutely make yours more blended if you want. I kind of like the variation of blended and um, more rougher strokes. What's kind of important to this background is that I want it to be very bright, cheerful, colorful, expressive, and I want it to be more saturated, vibrant toward the top, lighter toward the bottom, where I've decided this is gonna be the napkin. But you don't have to do any background at all if you don't want, that's completely up to you. All right, so I'm coming in with my lightest shade of pink. I think this is Permanent Rose from Rembrandt. Again, the color name doesn't matter. Use whatever light baby pink that you have. And I'm just gonna start on this side. Like I said, because there's so many um, similar things happening here, I think that a lot of this is probably going to be very redundant and repetitive. That's why I've decided to speed quite a bit of it up so no one would get bored. Um, but I do want you guys to get what you can from the video. Why did I make that line crooked? That line there should not be crooked. <laughs> it should be pretty straight there. 
And if you guys were wondering if I didn't already say, I can't remember what these things on my fingers are. These are just um, individual finger gloves or finger cots. Uh, it's just to protect my hand from the pastel dust because I do have hand eczema. I'm going to take just one shade or one value darker, come around this edge and toward this side. And try not to press too hard with your initial layers because if you do, especially if you're working on that student grade paper, uh, you may have a hard time getting the subsequent layers to stick. Now, of course, you can get around that with fixative, but if you don't have fixative, then that would be a bummer. So we got the pink and the purple macaron roughly blocked in. Of course, we're going to come back in and refine these um, more, but I want to move on to just get them all blocked in initially, and then we'll come in with our final details on top. I want to work on this, oh, I think they would call it a pistachio macaron, or maybe even a mint. Use your imagination. It can be whatever you want it to be. I've got this really dark green here. It's going to look almost black on camera. And this is one of those Rembrandt Extra Darks. Oops, and that's going to be the shadow underneath of the purple macaron onto the green macaron. I'm going to come down a shade here. start blending into that. And I am going to repeat essentially all the same steps for this cookie that I did for the other two. So let's do that together now.
so these four macarons are going to be the macarons that are going to be the most in focus. And then these two little guys over here are going to be off in the background. So ultimately what I've done is, is um, I want to get a layer of pastel down on the paper, pastel matte paper, come in and spray some fixative, and then I'll come in and refine it and do my last layer where I'll sharpen these up a little bit more. At this point, if I tried to do that, likely, because I'm using a little bit softer of a pastel, um, it might not stick, or at least not in the way that's going to get me punchy highlights and really vibrant colors and sharper details. Not that this is going to be a highly detailed piece by any means, but I want to get that first layer down, and then I'll come back in and refine this more. So one thing that I wanted to mention right now is that for the three macarons that I've already done that have the white center, of course, the um, filling isn't going to be purely white. If you were doing this really illustrative, you can get away with that. But I'm going to come back in and add a little bit of color in there as a shadow because there would be shadow on the um, the white filling as well from the cookies. So I'll put that in a little bit. I also wanted to mention I'm using the Rembrandt's Extra Soft White. Believe it or not, Rembrandt sells two variations of the white. They have their regular white pastel and then they have this Extra Soft version. It's still not, just because they call it extra soft, I don't want you to think that it's actually extra soft. It's not coming anywhere close to how soft um, like a Schmincke white would be. And I love Schmincke's white, but this is still really, really good. It's, it's pretty soft, I have to say. I like it better probably than their regular white. So that's the version that I'll buy from now on. But it, it is able to get some really nice um, really nice bright white effects on there. So I'm going to come over here now and work on the other cookies that are going to be a little bit farther off into the distance. They're all looking a little bit blobby, but these ones are definitely going to look much more blobby. And yeah, that's the, that's the word I'm going with. <laughs> blobby. Uh, I want these to be out of focus because if everything's in focus, then you really kind of lose the effect. You know, our eyes don't see everything in sharp detail. So what's closer to the viewer is going to be in more detail and these are going to be a little bit farther away. Now, if you're working with more of those student grade pastels, like the, the Gold Faber from Faber-Castell, which are actually pretty good, just make sure that if you're working with those student grade supplies and paper that you don't press too hard, okay, on those initial layers. Now I really like the Spectrafix Pastel Primer and I've done a full review on that. I'm going to link that up in the iCards as well just in case you guys are interested. But that is an amazing pastel fixative. It's my favorite. The only thing wrong with that is the spray bottle. I transferred mine into a different bottle for that reason. And sometimes I think it's nice if you have a little bit, I'm gonna take a little bit of the same purple I used in the purple macaron, and I'm gonna just put a tiny bit of that into that, excuse me, into that pink macaron because Often things have color influence of the colors around them. So I am going to finish up this cookie in a very similar way to the others, but the biggest difference is that I'm, I'm really going to make these more abstract. But isn't that pretty, that just a little bit of hint of lavender? I think I might go ahead and just add that into the bottom part too, just preemptively. And then blend over it with my pink. Isn't that pretty? And that way there's just, it's just one more way that you can get that beautiful color harmony. So I'm going to finish that one up. 
I'm going to finish this up in a very similar fashion, like I said, but I want this to be really loose and really, really abstract. influence of the purple in there. I think I want to take and do something really similar over here with this one. I want to put a little bit of that purple in in just a couple places. I think it makes it look really dynamic and just it just it really does add something special I feel because there there would be some influence. I feel like I can see that little bit of the lavender influence in this cookie in real life. So I want to add that in. So I'm going to add it in up here. Never too late. It's definitely never too late. And then blend over it with the pink to soften it into the image and to harmonize it in. And I don't want to do that as much with the one in the focal image only because this one I, I'm going to have much more in focus like I had said before because it's going to be closer to the viewer. Often when you see artwork um, or even in real life you'll notice that in general things that are closer to the viewer appear warmer in color so not only more in focus, but warmer in color, things that are farther away are going to be less in focus and they'll take on a cooler tone. Like when you see landscapes, you'll often notice that um, you'll see like purple mountains, cool purple mountains in the background and like warm green trees or something in the foreground. So that's just another little trick that you can implement to differentiate the foreground from the background or emphasize certain subjects and kind of play down others like what we're doing here. But I still thought that looked very pretty. All right, so over here, this little guy over here, this little yellow macaron over here, I wanted to show you the trick to keeping this um, lively of a yellow but also having a natural shadow on it in a way that makes it look like a baked good. I'm using this shade by Rembrandt. It's called Golden Ochre. You don't have to have this exact shade but what is important is that you have something like this. This is kind of like raw sienna raw siennas or like a raw sienna dark or some sort of color like that and what I love about it is that I can get that baked good look. And I think I talked about this in my gingerbread cookie tutorial that I had done. I can get that kind of natural baked good look with it because it has just a little bit of red in it. It's like yellow ochre with just a little bit of red in it, if you will. And it's going to make a nice natural shadow on the yellow without without making the yellow look muddy or dirty or dead because that's that's a little bit of a concern that's something you can really run into easy with yellows and especially because we want this to look yummy and edible um, like like a baked cookie should you don't want to choose anything with a green undertone you can choose a, any any kind of like warm yellowy brown that you might have, like raw sienna. You could probably get away with like a yellow ochre as well. But what you do not want to use, you do not want to use like a brown that has a lot of yellow, uh, a lot of green in it, because that's really going to muddy it. Or gray, you don't want to use a gray. And then I'm going to do the rest of the cookie the exact way 
that I did the others. Now you'll notice this cookie is kind of like we're seeing the bottom of this cookie. I apologize for my phone in the background. I'm so sorry, you guys, about that. That's rude. Um, you'll notice that this cookie is like we're seeing the bottom of the cookie. It's kind of like it's propped up. It's resting on this pink cookie. So we can't see all of it. It gives it a different perspective. And I want to come with this yellow just around the absolute ridge there. There we go, and I'll just blend that out. Again, if you have blending stumps or tortillons, you can use those. There we go. And let's see what I want to do there. I think I want to go over, um, kind of go over it with my yellow a little bit, just to kind of blend that in a little bit more. And you can kind of go back and forth. You'll notice that on mine there's quite a bit of dust and that's because that, that's not coming from the Rembrandts as much as that's coming from the Blick Artist Soft Pastels because they are softer than the Rembrandts. Not by a ton. Well, some of them. Some of them are quite a bit softer. Um, I, I should take that back. They're quite a bit softer. Yeah, a lot of them, but some of them are, are pretty on par. But I still wouldn't call them like, you know, super soft pastels or anything. They're not as soft as a Sennelier, I don't believe, in my opinion. But a softer pastel, you'll get more dust. Harder pastel, you'll get less dust, but you won't get as much color either. And there's that filling in the middle. And I'm not even going to do the little feet, the macaron feet. I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to give a little indication that there's a ridge here. And I'm going to kind of soften that. Because I don't want any hard lines on this cookie because it's too far away. It's too far away, you wouldn't see that. But I do want a little bit of a highlight right here. And that is going to help add some shape and show that this is a rounder object. See that? Maybe a little bit up there as well and then blend that in a tiny bit. Okay, so I think, I think that's pretty much for now all I want to do. I'll make sure I get that shadow under there. For, for right now, I think that's pretty much all I want to do with these cookies. Um, for the first layer, I feel like I've got a good first layer down. All right, so before I spray my layer of fixative and come in and sharpen all this up and add my final details, I need to add some visual weight. I need to add the shadows. Now, of course, it would be very simple and easy to come in with a few shades of gray and add shadows um, underneath the macarons on the napkin like that, but take a look at what we have going on here. We have a lot of bright, cheerful pastel tones. You know, these light baby pinks, baby green, you know, baby yellow, baby purple. If we were to add gray, especially um, a stick of gray pastel, which would be mixed with a black pigment, it's gonna look very dead. 
it's going to really bring down the mood, bring down the tone, and it won't be harmonious with anything else. I'm not against using gray pastels or even black in pastel, but since we haven't used any of that already in the painting, it would just really be yucky. It would look very dead, and it's not going to do anything nice for our painting. Instead, I want to choose colors that are very vibrant so that I can have a very lively shadow. So I'm going to take this dark kind of purple tone that I have here. I'm also going to take my darkest green that I have here. I know they'll blend together to make kind of a harmonious mud kind of a color. And I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start over here and I'm going to add the shadow to this one first. This is a pretty dark purple, but it's certainly not the darkest purple that I use so far in the painting. Um, hmm. And then I'm going to take that really dark green. This is the darkest green I think I've used so far. Let me see. Yes. So this is like a black and green color, and that's going to go right under it right under that pink macaron there. And you could see just how dark that is. Your brain would accept that in the context of this painting as black, but it's not. It's not black and it's very, very lively. And then I'm just gonna blend it softly into the napkin color that I have there. I've sprayed a layer of fixative, I let it dry, and now I'm going to come in and I'm going to focus um, mostly on the three center macrons because those are the ones that I really want to be the most detailed. I'm going to come in, make sure that I sharpen, crispen up any edges that I need to, make sure I get a nice contrast where I need it anywhere. Now, I feel like, for the most part, when it comes to artwork, one of the things that makes your artwork really look more professional and finished is when you have a good combination of crisp, sharp edges where you need them, clean edges where you need them, and more blurred edges when you where you need those, you know. I hope that made sense what I just said. I tend to get really kind of quiet and subdued when I work um, while I'm painting, let's see. All right, so I'm actually gonna come in with the white and I think add some highlights with the white in here to get some nice contrast. I'm just doing like, as I said before, a scumbling motion, but I'm also just doing some little dots too, because I see those. Where did that darker one go? I want to make sure I get enough of those little dots as well. And because I sprayed a layer of fixative, I don't have to worry now about anything not sticking. Make sure I get nice, good, nice, strong range of tonal values in there. All right, now remember when I had said that we're not going to leave that white filling in the middle. We're not going to leave that completely solid white because that's not realistic and that's true. That's definitely not realistic. We're not going to leave it. We're not going to leave it like that. We're going to definitely add a little bit of shadow and I think for me on the pink one I want to add a little bit of this purple. 
I think that would make a really nice, a really nice shadow. So I want to add a little bit of shadow to that. Let me get my little blender. That is a small, small area. So don't be too hard on yourself. Try and just go on the corner or like a broken piece of the pastel. Okay. And blend that in. And then right down the center, and this needs to be kind of clean, right down the center of the filling is where you want your brightest brightest highlight to go. Okay. So that one is pretty good. I want to get a little more brightness in the filling over here. I don't want the shadows to be too strong, but I want a little bit of a shadow there. Let's see, I might come in with a little more of this light pink just on the edge here. I know I want to come in with more of that lightest purple on this macaron. I want to really define that edge a little bit. So I just went ahead and I finished up putting my artist signature on the bottom of the page. I have a full tutorial on how to get a nice, clear, crisp, readable signature on your pastel artwork. And I'm going to leave that tutorial linked up in the iCards up above as well as the description box down below. I urge you guys to go check that out because this is a technique that I've come up with that works for any brand of pastel any paper, even after multiple layers of pastel, this will work. This will work always. So I'm going to leave that tutorial linked up uh, for you guys because I urge you to check that out. I think it's going to be really helpful for you. I'm just going to go and start putting some of my final details on here. We are pretty much done. I'm going to reinforce that white frosting there. Um, Let's see, what else do I want to do? I think I want to come in and kind of reinforce this shadow here a little bit more underneath that top little macron there. I'll make sure I've got that on. And maybe Maybe I'll add a little more of that also. A few little dots, a few little indications. Yeah, I'll make sure I really got some good strong values in there. There we go. Let's see, maybe I wanna add a tiny bit more of the, of the highlight to the jam in the middle here. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll just
Sharpen up a few more edges. I absolutely love pastel painting. And I think the thing about art is that it's just, it really is so healing. It's very therapeutic, at least it is for me. I wasn't in the absolute best spirits when I came to sit down to paint. But now, I just feel better. I feel like art for me has such a rejuvenative effect. And I'm so grateful for this outlet and to have it in my life. It, it means so much to me and I want to share that with others more. Um, and YouTube gives me the opportunity to do that. I wish the channel would grow a little bit, a little bit more quickly and I'm kind of hoping you guys would help me out a little bit with that. If you would just share my videos, give me a thumbs up. So you guys would just hit that subscribe button, share my videos, comment, and give this video a like. That would really help me out and it would help me to reach more people. Just gonna add a few little finishing touches around the edges. I want these to still be relatively loose and illustrative. So I don't wanna overdo anything here too much. Just get in there and blend that out a little bit. But for the most part, I really think I think that we are done. I'm almost certain that that's pretty much. Let me just get a little bit sharper of a line there. does wrap up today's tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful and you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Leave me some comments if you have any questions or suggestions for what kinds of videos that you would like to see next. I really hope that you guys found this helpful and enjoyable. I loved painting these for you guys and I just think that it came out so fun and so colorful and sweet and bright and I just hope that I could make your day just a little bit brighter and a little bit happier because that really is my goal with this channel and what I'm trying to do with my art so I hope that I've been successful in that. and. If you guys wouldn't mind, I would really appreciate it if you guys would share my videos because it helps my channel grow and that way I can reach more people and I can keep doing these tutorials and these art videos that I love. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, have a great day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.